created quite a cast of characters. It's, I mean, it reminds you must be an yeah. SEC fan. It sounds like oh, Mel- yeah. sounds like Melonville to me. Like you know, like all these, you know, you got your Earl Camembert, your Edith Brickley, you know, all the all these guys are coming in and they're insane. And you're, I, I don't know what what is your you're trying to hold it all together? Are you sort of kind of trying to hold it together? You're just enjoying. Sort of. Yeah. I'm just trying to. I'm trying to like my job as a host. I feel like is to use whatever tactics I can in order to find something funny about what's going on. Right. So sometimes people come in and my job is simply to get out of the way and be like, Oh really? Oh, you did that (laughs) because they're just running with it, you know? And then sometimes someone will come in with, you know, admittedly a thin premise for their character. And my job is to take it as far as it can go before I realize it's not really working and then try to take it in another direction. And and then if that doesn't work, take it in another direction. And, and basically it's just like a test to try to find where the joke is, you know? So that's, that's kind of what I do, but I am the straight man on the show. Yeah. (laughs) And it sounds like it's, it's all one take. Is that, you just let it go? It is. You just let it go and, and whatever, if it bombs, you know, it's... Yeah, we don't we don't talk about what we're going to talk about or anything um, at most. Usually what it is, is a comedian will come in and they'll sit down and I say, what's your what's your name and what do you do? And that's all I really want to know. And and sometimes if someone's doing the show for the first time, they'll start explaining the bit to me. And I go, oh, no, no, no. I just I want to hear it in real time so I can, you know, experience it in real time and react to it in real time. And so, yeah, it's all just uh, improvised there in the moment, and we put it out, and and um, somehow people still are listening after eight hundred episodes. So you, so so because this is all improvised, you you are not rejecting any character. I mean, well, that you know, it's interesting because there is a there there's the rule that I think you're referring to, Holly, of yes and in improv. Which uh, to explain it for people who have no idea what that is, when you're doing, when you're improvising, especially on stage or on a podcast, someone comes in and says, hi, my name is Joe. Your job as the other person in the scene is not to say, no, your name is not Joe, because that's denying someone. And then, and then the other person goes like, uh, yes, it is. Like it just ends a scene, right? So if a person comes in and says, I had a really rough night last night, you're supposed to say, Oh, you had a rough night last night? And the and part is like, and and I also had a rough night. Let's talk about our rough nights. You know, and that that opens a scene up to when I had a, a talk show, a, a TV talk show, that's what I would tell the celebrity guests is is I had a whole bunch of crazy questions I would ask them. And I would say, get into the habit of just saying yes to every question, like answering yes, because my questions are usually like, uh, you know, hey, Ellie Kemper. On the office, uh, boy, I really have painted myself into the corner because I can't remember <laughs> who Ellie Kemper played on the office. But uh, was she Pam? Um, were, were you, you know, something's something crazy? Were you also in love with Jim and you uh, were mad at at Pam for this? You know, just say that's a que- it's a terrible yeah. question, but say that's the question. Oh, improv Ellie- thing, right? Is that what's happening? You're you're good right. at yes. <laughs> if Ellie Kemper then says, "No, I wasn't in love with with Jim." then everything ends. Where do you go? And we go, okay, next question. But if she says, yeah, I was in love with Jim. I used to sit there at my desk and uh, I would stare at him the entire time and the camera would zoom in on me, you know, then, then something can continue. And so that, that's, that's normally what, what improv is all about is just like not shutting down a premise that someone else brings in. Now, to be fair, if a premise isn't working, I'll often shut it down and try to pivot and do another direction. So I don't know, the, like rules are made to be broken, but that, but that's the general idea. So was, I mean, okay. So you're known for asking uh, our questions. Was that like between two forums, did you come up with questions and just like, I'm, these guys have no idea what I'm going to ask. Neither Zach doesn't know what I'm going to, to throw out or what was that? Uh, yeah. I, you magic? know, we, we haven't, <laughs> We, we we never used to talk about Between Two Ferns and the process of how we would make them because we wanted it to be, back when it was more of a current concern, we wanted it to be a little bit of a mystery. When we did the movie in 2019, um, Zach really wanted to show 
uh, the bloopers at the end of the movie. And I was a little against it because I was like, we've never done that. We've never shown anyone the, you know, the process, but uh, he was right. I mean, there uh, people like them more than the movie itself. So uh, I, I think you can see from the bloopers. Um, yeah, we never tell the the acts what the questions are, the inter interviewees. We never tell them what the questions are going to be. We're just having fun in the moment. Everyone's crack cracking up while it happens. And then we edit everything out and make it seem like it's a really dry, angry conversation between people. <laughs> Has some brilliant editing. Was, that, was, there show, was there something you saw like on, I don't know, on Merv Griffin or, or Diana Shore or some, something where like, oh, this this is super awkward. We I need to, you know, emulate yeah. this. I need to elaborate or just expand on whatever, you know, this guy just asked whatever he comes into his mind. Yeah. You mentioned Merv Griffin, by the way. His estate was very kind and gave us a lot of clips that we used in the movie. Oh, um, but uh, uh yeah. It, well, first of all, it came out of two things. First of all, Zach is a great stand-up comedian, and he would do a lot of um, crowd work. And he would talk to people in the crowd a lot and have really awkward conversations with them. And that's just his personality. Um, but he and I both um, grew up doing public access talk shows. Um, in In high school for me, and I think in college for him, we both had uh, talk shows on on public access TV, which if people don't know what it is now, which you may not, um, <laughs> the government uh, is supposed to allow one channel on the airwaves to be for the public. And if if anyone in the public can sign up and have a show and do a show, and it just leads to bizarre, uncomfortable, weird shows, right? So but he and I both had had these shows and we were kind of fascinated with public access and so I was talking to Zach, I had a, a a sketch show that I was doing and I said, Hey, I'd love for you to do something on it. Um, and he said, you know, I've always really wanted to do a public access talk show called between two ferns. And I laughed because I knew immediately I was like, Oh my God, that's so perfect. Because when you're doing public access talk shows, the only set dressing you have available to you are these plants because you're, you basically have black duvetine behind you. And it just would look like nothing except you got to put these giant plants in there to fill up the frame. Right. So I just, I love the title. And so I had also been talking to Michael Sarah about doing something on the show. And I said, Hey, Michael, do you want to do, this is the concept we have. It's between two ferns. It's a talk show with Zach. And he was like, okay, I'm in. And we, we were in a basement and we just filmed it just kind of messing around and trying stuff out. And, and, you know, like Zach was trying stuff and, and Michael was trying stuff and, and we were shouting like ideas from the other room in, in the basement. And then um, our, our editor, Dan Strange, who directed a lot of the episodes too, he put it all together in this great way that just made it so uncomfortable and so awkward. It was, it was, it was very cool. And we just stumbled into it and, and we put it up on the internet it was very popular, like over a million people, which back then was giant, um, watched it. And we were like, well, that was cool. And we never thought we would do another one, <laughs> which is so weird. And then Jimmy Kimmel said, hey, I want you to do another one with me. And we said, oh, no, we already did that. <laughs> and he was, like, he was like, no, you can do more. And I was like, oh, oh, yeah, you're right. It's a talk show. We can do more episodes, I guess. And so then, you know, our friend John Hamm wanted to do one and, and Zach had The Hangover coming out. So Bradley Cooper ended up doing one and it just it snowballed and became a big thing, um, which was, is really, I think, one of the best ways to have success in this business is to just kind of do something for fun and then stumble into success, you know, which which I, I'm really appreciative of, which is sort of like the comedy Bang Bang podcast. I was just doing it for fun because I love radio. Yeah. And it became popular.